Hi everyone, Al DeMarco here, General Manager at DeMarcoSports.com, and this is going to be your Saturday video report. I was just taking a look at my bracket here, and I'll tell you, there's more red on it than a construction zone on the interstate. Um, yeah, not a great first round. More importantly, you know, I play in a couple of pools where you get uh, points based on how teams advance. Uh, the higher the round, uh, the further the advancement, the more points. And unfortunately, I'm looking here. Uh, the good news is I only have one of my potential Elite Eight teams knocked out, and that would be New Mexico. Uh, the problem is my potential Sweet 16 teams, I've already gotten four of them knocked out with Auburn, St. Mary's, New Mexico, and Kentucky. Yeah doesn't look good. Anyway, listen, uh, this is going to be your Saturday video report. I've got a number of games I'm going to run down for you. In fact, I'm going to run down the entire Saturday card and give you my free selections as well. Now, on Friday, I actually had my first losing day here in college basketball with free picks in three weeks, which tells you how hot the picks have been that I've been giving away. But yesterday, I actually went one and three, cashing in with Duke, losing with St. Mary's, Florida Atlantic, and New Mexico. Uh, I'm still 26-10-1 with the complimentary college basketball releases over the past three-plus weeks. More importantly, however, on Friday, I did snap my three-game losing streak over on DeMarcoSports.com, cashing in with the best bet thanks to Marquette's huge second half. The Golden Eagles were sleepwalking in the first half, but they came back and uh, got the win and cover which I really needed, and so did my customers as well. So, with that being said, before I get to the complimentary plays today, I just want to also tell you something. Today, the second biggest discount of the entire year is available over at demarcosports.com. You can save 27% off your total purchase price. That's either for packages or for individual picks, 27%. Now, I do this a couple of times a year. Now, at the end of the NBA playoffs, and right at the beginning of the football season, for a reason. I do it now because as the college basketball season winds down, you realize the baseball season starts here in five days. Now, we've had a couple of games with the Dodgers and Padres overseas, but that doesn't really count. And I will tell you what I tell everybody every time the baseball season rolls around. It is the easiest season, the easiest sport to make money in. Since I created this site uh, 21 years ago, 22 years ago, I'm the winningest baseball handicapper at the site. I've turned a profit in the sport here at the site 17 of the 22 years since I started it, and I've been betting baseball and winning money in baseball long, long, long. I don't even want to tell you how long I've been base betting baseball. It's embarrassing. Uh, yeah, but long before I created these sites, let me just tell you this. Um, and the other thing is that the NBA playoffs are going to be here around the corner as well. They start on April 20th. And the key to betting baseball is this. And what makes the sport such a beautiful sport to make money in is two keys, or the two keys are, I should say, consistency and repetition. You can count on pitchers, barring injuries, rotations, the same guys going every four to five days, and teams playing three or four game sets. Consistency and repetition, it's the key to betting baseball. But I realize a lot of handicappers and a lot of gamblers take it off because there's a reason they call it the dog days of summer. You've got to really be into following baseball. It's a real easy sport, but, you know, this is what I do for a living. I realize a lot of people don't get into it. Then the other thing is that the latter part of the NBA season, let's face it, the Final Four is going to be, what, April 6th and April 8th. A lot of NBA teams tank without you knowing it or without them admitting it. And then a lot of players take injury management days in the latter weeks of the season. So you really have baseball to keep going until the NBA playoffs start. A lot of handicappers and a lot of gamblers take off the NBA playoffs. God knows why, because unlike the regular season where there's no consistency, every game is a must-win game in the playoffs. So again, you have consistency, you have repetition because of multiple game series, and it's the only time in the year where you know NBA players are going all out all the time. When I was a reporter, one night I'm in the locker room, uh, it's a group pool reporter type of thing. One of the guys asked an NBA Hall of Famer he's, uh, about how do you get up for every game? And this guy says, well, it's impossible because it dictates uh, the long 
uh, the length of the season dictates it's impossible to get up for every game. The light bulb goes off in my head. It's like, as a gambler, I'm going, Jesus, it never dawned on me. I'm, you know, in my early 20s. It's like, these guys don't get up for every single game. Bingo. Playoffs, different story. So again, 27% off your total purchase price. It's used for any combination of picks and or packages. The only stipulation, and it has it on the site, you got to put everything in your shopping cart at one time. Should you have any questions, you can always contact customer service. So with all that being said, ooh, let's get busy here and start talking about your complimentary place because this card, as opposed to Friday and even Thursdays, is much, much stronger. Uh, first pick, love Gonzaga today. Gonzaga, Gonzaga, who cares? I love them today. Minus four and a half, or you can get a minus four. I mean, both lines are out there. Um, this is a team that's on a 10 and one roll. This is a team that absolutely had a cakewalk in its opening game. Um, you know, Kansas not only played the late game, but blew the 22 point lead. So the Jayhawks already playing shorthanded, uh, had to play Hunter Dickinson, who was playing his first game in two and a half weeks. Had to play him 37 minutes. They played the late game. And now they're playing the early game at 3.15 Eastern time here today in uh, this contest against Gonzaga. And it's in the Delta Center. Of course, it's Salt Lake City, Utah. That's a tough spot for Kansas. And Kansas, of course, was turnover prone again. 18 turnovers led to 15 Sanford points the other night. They're not a good three-point shooting team, which is really the one place that you can exploit the Bulldogs defensively. And again, while the Bulldogs were not even pressed and didn't have to break a sweat against McNeese State, Sanford gave Kansas all they could possibly handle. Was Dickinson outstanding with 19 points and 20 rebounds against an undersized Sanford team? Yes, he was. But today, he's going to go against Graham Ike, who is not as tall at 6'9", but he is physical. And this is a guy who averaged 16 and a half points and 7 rebounds a game. So I think that... Um, you know, I think that Gonzaga's going to win this game, and I think they're going to pull away, and they're going to win it by around eight points or so. And uh, I really like them in this game. And remember, uh, the Bulldogs are a good three-point shooting team as well. Uh, and they've got that nice inside-out game. And I think Kansas, a team that doesn't have much depth, and missing their leading score, I just, I just think it's going to be a long day and a, sh a quick exit for Bill Self's uh, Jayhawks in this contest. Uh, your next game, Iowa State, a six and a half point favorite over Washington State. Now this game is going at uh, 610 Eastern time here today. And again, Washington State played the late game against Drake on Thursday. And this is a big step up from playing Drake uh, to playing Iowa State. And that game for Washington State concluded around midnight. So again, we're that Drake-Washington State game was nip and tuck until the very end. Iowa State really didn't have break much of a sweat in beating South Dakota State 82-65. to They shot 58% in that game. They forced 15 turnovers in the game. Um, you know, this Iowa State defense, as you know, they're second in defensive efficiency. They're second in turnover uh, percentage. They're third in steal percentage. Uh, they force turnovers on nearly 25% of their opponent's possessions. They come up with steals on almost 15% of their opponent's possessions. Washington State hasn't faced anybody that will apply that type of defensive pressure at all this season. Because, let's face it, the Pac-12 is not that type of league. And Washington State really was fortunate to be great considering how poorly they shot from the field. 14 for 41 on two-pointers, right? That's 34%. They managed to escape with the win because they hit 50% of their threes and only missed five of their 22 free throws. But this team, Washington State, they were five for 17 on layups. And that was against Drake. You think Iowa State's going to not impede the lane and stop their progress in the paint? I like Iowa State, and I think this is a damn cheap price to take the far superior team from the far better league at six and a half points, and that is in a price that has stayed very steady. The next complimentary play, Tennessee played like Tennessee was supposed to 
in its opening round game. Now, true, it was playing St. Peter's, okay? Let's be honest. So beating up the Peacocks 83-49, to a game that they jumped out, the Vols did to a 29-7 start, that was expected. But that was the team, the Volunteers, that is number four in defensive efficiency in the nation. Um, this is going to be the third straight year that Rick Barnes, who remains the winningest coach in Texas Longhorns history, is going to face his one-time employer. And, of course, Rodney Terry, the current Texas coach, was an assistant on Rick Barnes' staff with the Longhorns from 2002 to 2011. Um, you know, this Texas team only beat three ranked teams all season, right? And, you know, I'm just not that impressed, the fact that they beat Colorado State, because although Colorado State got a lot of headlines for beating Virginia, I told you Virginia wasn't that good. And Colorado State, they mowed them down, but I think the Tennessee, the defensive pressure, they're going to apply on Texas. I think the, vol uh, the Volunteers will be able to extend that margin in the second half by wearing Texas down. And I think the Tennessee team that at times looked like the best team in the SEC, and granted, the SEC has sucked here in the postseason, I think Tennessee will be able to pull away and win this game by 11 to 12 points. So, um, with North Carolina's game Today, going up against Michigan State being my best bet. I'm not going to be talking about that particular game, of course. But those are going to be your three complementary plays. Now, in terms of ranking them, um, I like uh, Gonzaga number one, Iowa State a close number two, and Tennessee number three. Again, it would be Gonzaga number one, Iowa State number two, a very close number two, and then uh, Tennessee number three. Now let's talk about the other games on the board. Arizona is a nine and a half point favorite today. The early start at 12.45 Eastern time uh, in Tucson, which is really a disservice for the Wildcats. I mean, that's a 9.45 start uh, Tucson time for them. Struggled against Long Beach State and Caleb Love, their leading scorer, is in a shooting slump. Yes, he had 18 points against Long Beach State, right? But um, three for 12 on threes. I, I did some math here. In his last four games, he is 13 for 51 from the field, seven for 33 on three-pointers. Not too good. Uh, Dayton, down 17 points with eight minutes to play against Nevada, um, came back to win that game. They played one ranked team this year. That was Houston. They lost by 14. I'm not sure which way to go here, to be honest with you. I, I I don't know. I mean, on paper, I think Arizona should be able to win this game. But Tommy Lloyd's team, over the past couple of years, you look at the talent assembled, and it just often doesn't translate onto the court. So there's nothing wrong with a handicapper telling you, I don't know, and I'm not sure. Uh, the next game to talk about would be the, um, let's see, just rolling down here on the board, would be... <laughs> oh, Illinois. This is, a, this is a real interesting game. Illinois and Duquesne. My God, is Cinderella slipper not falling off of the Dukes in this one? Illinois is a 9.5 to 10.5 point favorite, depending on where you shop this game in Omaha. Um, has not appeared in the Sweet 16 since 2005. You've got the number nine offense in the league, in the country, at 84.4 points. That is uh, almost 13.5 points more than Duquesne scores. Uh, the Illini on a 7-1 and one roll after taking care of business against Moorhead State. Here's the advantage I think that Illinois has in this game, however. Uh, Terrence Shannon Jr., uh, just on an absolute roll. 26 points in Thursday's game against Moorhead State. He averaged 34 points in the Big Ten tournament. He has averaged 26.6 points after I did the math over the last 13 games. That's up his season average to 23.1. So when you look at the Duquesne team, they are a guard-oriented team and two senior leaders with Day Day Grant and Jimmy Clark III, right? But they're 6'2 and 6'3". And the key reserve for Duquesne, their number three guard, uh, Jake DeMichel, is 6'4". But then you look at the Illinois guards, and you start with Shannon, right? And then you go to um, uh, Damask. They're both 6'6". Six, six. And then Ty Rogers is the first guy off the bench. He's 6'6". Six, six. I think when Illinois gets to driving the ball and taking it down court, I mean, you've got a bunch of guys that are two, three, four inches taller than Duquesne. 
And Duquesne does not have any bigs, so to speak, and Illinois does. So you've got the Illini, who are number five in the nation in rebounding. They've dominated and owned the board battle in 17 of their last 20 games. That should also give them plenty of second chance scoring opportunities as well. And remember, Duquesne is 189 among 353 three Division I teams when it comes to rebounding. You also have an Illinois team that likes to play fast. You know Duquesne wants to slow down the tempo, but Duquesne doesn't turn the ball over. They only average about 10 and a half turnovers per game. So I can see, finally, Cinderella Slipper falling off this Duquesne team. And Illinois, granted, they have played some inconsistent ball this season, but I would lay the points with the Illini here because I think they have an offensive arsenal that is diverse, and because they also hit the rack, I think that they can pull away and cover this game. So I like the Illini. Uh, Creighton and Oregon. Listen, I think Oregon is a, is a better's delight. Um, but let me ask you this. In the five straight games they have won, right? Uh, taking the Pac-12 championship and then beating South Carolina. Have they really beaten anybody? Um, you know, Creighton, is, what, they made the late eight last year. This is a dynamite team. Two veteran guards, the three-time defensive Big uh, East player of the year anchoring the middle. Um, the, the thing with Creighton is you're either going to see Creighton explode offensively or not hit the broad side of the barn. Because this is a team that relies on volume, three-point shooting, and if the shots are falling, they can beat anybody on any given day. Just like betting is a 50-50 proposition, betting on Creighton is a 50-50 proposition. They've got a rim protector. They've got outstanding three-point shooting. But if a, the shots ain't falling, they ain't winning. I'm betting on them being able to get the job done today. Plus, I'm looking for regression from Oregon. I mean, they got a magnificent game from um, uh, Jermaine uh, Cousinard, is that how you pronounce his name? I think I, they don't pay me to pronounce names. Uh, I mean, 40 points, right? 40 points in that game against South Carolina the other day. He averages 16 per game this season. If he regresses to his norm, which is typical, where are they going to get the offense? And remember, South Carolina, very strong defensive team. Didn't play as well in the latter stages of the season as they did at the end of January and February. But South Carolina is not an offensive juggernaut. Creighton is. So although I think the betting public is looking at Oregon as like this tremendous dog, no, I don't think so. The other thing that's kind of interesting is that, you know, Dayton, Dana Offman, the one-time Creighton coach, spent a number of years there, you know, has this great tournament record against the spread. But most of those ATS wins came in the first round. You know, you get him out of the first round, and he's just a 500 coach against the number. So I like Creighton a lot, actually, in this game. Then you have Oakland and NC State. If you think I had no idea about the Arizona game, I have absolutely no idea here. I mean, props to Oakland for the way they took care of Kentucky. I mean, momentum is certainly on the Golden Grizzly side. And this is a team in a league that I followed repeatedly this season, but I don't know. Damned if I know. So, again, I told you what my best bets were in terms of complimentary plays. Of the fringe games, I would say that um, mm, Creighton would be number one and Illinois a close two. So that'll do it today. I wish you all, well, guys, good luck, and we'll do this all again tomorrow.